This is the Dirac Lagrangian. It describes a spin one half particle using a four component spinner. In this video, we show you how to go from here to the Dirac equation. In general, to know how a particle moves, you need its equation of motion, or EOM in short. By knowing the Lagrangian of a theory, we're only one step away because the equations of motion for a given Lagrangian are simply its Euler Lagrange equations. The Euler-Lagrange equations say that the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to a certain field equals the derivative of the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the derivative of the field. That was tough to say, but it should be pretty clear from the equation. Now, how do we apply this to the Dirac Lagrangian? First off, which psi do we choose, psi or psi bar? The correct answer is both of them, but separately. Since the spinner has complex entries, we should actually do one Euler-Lagrange equation for the real part and one for the imaginary part. However, this turns out to be quite tedious, so instead we can do a trick. We usually describe a complex number via its real and imaginary part. It's perfectly valid, however, to describe it using the number and its complex conjugate instead. If you know the number itself and its complex conjugate, you can easily calculate the real and imaginary parts. Okay, let's do this. First we'll calculate the Euler-Lagrange equation for psi bar. The derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to psi bar is i d slash minus m psi. And the derivative with respect to the derivative of psi bar is zero. There's just no d psi bar anywhere in the Lagrangian. There we have it. This is the equation of motion for psi. These equations describe how psi behaves and moves. Note that we calculated the Euler-Lagrange equations for psi bar, but ended up with the EOM for psi. Next, we calculate the Euler-Lagrange equations for psi. We could expect that this leads to the EOM for psi bar. In order to calculate the derivatives, let's rewrite the Lagrangian by multiplying the terms in brackets. The derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to psi is minus psi bar m. And the derivative with respect to the derivative of psi is psi bar i gamma mu. The Euler-Lagrange equations tell us that we need to differentiate this term once more, so this yields d mu psi bar i gamma mu. If we want to use a fancy notation, we could write this as psi bar d mu i gamma mu, where the arrow on top of the derivative means that we let it act to the left. This can be neatly expressed as psi bar i d slash. And altogether, this leads to psi bar i d slash plus m is equal to zero. To conclude this video, let's investigate how the two equations are related. We start with the Dirac equation for psi and apply a Hermitian conjugate. This reverses the terms and puts psi dagger to the left. The i gets a minus sign from the complex conjugation and the derivative now has to act to the left since psi moved. Then we have the Hermitian conjugate of gamma mu and the mass stays the same, since it's a real number. The Hermitian conjugate of a gamma matrix is given by gamma zero, gamma mu, gamma zero, which means that we can pull out a gamma zero to the left and have psi bar again. But wait, there is no gamma zero to pull out next to the mass term. So we put the inverse of gamma zero there. To get rid of it, we multiply the whole equation with gamma zero from the left. This cancels the inverse of gamma zero next to m, and produces a gamma zero gamma zero term. Finally, by using the Clifford algebra of the gamma matrices, we see that gamma zero gamma zero is equal to the identity matrix. So we arrive at the Dirac equation for psi bar. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.